back, Steve. I know it is. Because I don't know what I'm going to do if it doesn't. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Fandom Show. As you can see, I'm not wearing a hat today because I just had my hair cut and thought I'd like to show it off. What do you think? All right, so today's episode is gonna be a lot of fun. It is time to talk Avengers Endgame. Oh yes, oh yes, I've been waiting for this. Now, just as a preface here, I'm not going to go through the entire movie in detail because firstly, it's three hours long and I would never want to put any of you through that. And secondly, because when I do a review like this, I just like to offer my general impressions and thoughts rather than going full bore. If you do want the full Monty, there are ways to get it, but you will not find it here on the Phantom Show. With that said, let's jump into Avengers Endgame. First things first, this poster is amazing. All right, and heads up, this review does contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, shame on you. But uh, you're going to want to see the movie before you check out this video, unless, of course, you want everything spoiled for you, in which case, hey, stay put. I got you covered. All right, so to get things started, none of these thoughts are in any particular order. They're just the various thoughts that were in my head after I saw the movie. So let's get to it. First of all, I thought the big Thorbowski was freaking awesome. I know some people probably thought that fat Thor was not a good thing. I thought it was great. How cool is it to see Thor as a beer belly dude who lives in a house with a couple of guys and yells at stupid kids on Fortnite? It was just so funny and so different for the character. I absolutely loved it. Also, props to the filmmakers for actually calling it out in the movie because at one point Iron Man does refer to Thor as Lebowski. And let me tell you something, he really does look like the big Lebowski in his getup in this movie. Also, fun fact, Jeff Bridges, who played the big Lebowski in that movie, played the villain in the first Iron Man movie. So a little MCU tie in there, kind of neat. The appearance in Iron Man allowed Bridges to shave his head, which is something he had always wanted to do. And on a quasi-related note, I thought there was a lot of good humor in the movie. Obviously, a lot of the people in this cast have been with each other through multiple movies, so there's a lot of camaraderie. And you can tell that by watching things play out on the screen. Uh, the discussion about time travel movies was hilarious, and it's just fun to watch. There's some serious stuff too, of course, given the magnitude of this film, but there's a lot of fun humor and good nods to the past films as well. I also loved the part where the female Avengers teamed up to help get the gauntlet where it needed to go. I just about leapt out of my seat. That was like the coolest thing ever. More of that Marvel Universe, please. Yes, yes, yes. Is it possible that Endgame was the most star-studded movie ever? I mean, seriously, you got Robert Downey Jr., Gwyneth Paltrow, Scarlett Johansson, Robert Redford, Samuel L. Jackson, Josh Brolin, Don Cheadle, Michael Douglas, Bradley Cooper, Michelle Favor, Angela Bassett, and I ain't even done yet in this movie. All in all, there's a total of 19 Academy Award nominees in this film. I'm no statistician, but I think that's a record. Gonna make a bold prediction here. Someone will eventually win an Oscar for their performance in a Marvel movie. I also quite enjoyed seeing Iron Man as a family man. His scenes with his daughter were so adorable. The little girl they got to play her is excellent and it's just really sweet and sentimental and I'm sure that I Love You 3000 is going to be a major thing for years going forward. But kudos to the filmmakers for showing a really sweet side of Tony Stark. That was a heck of a lot of fun. Also. The battle scene at the end, oh my god, is that the most epic thing you've ever seen or what? <clears throat> I'll tell you what, when all those portals opened and Captain America said Avengers Assemble, I just about hit the freaking roof. I, oh man, it was absolutely incredible. I don't even know how to describe it. It was freaking amazing. I can't wait to watch that scene like 20 more times after the movie comes out on DVD. It has to be one of the greatest things I've ever seen in any movie ever. I liked how the movie did give some throwback notes to the other Avengers movies. The Captain America versus Captain America fight was pretty darn funny and well done. Uh, so kudos to the filmmakers for really doing a great job in honoring the past films. So, my final thoughts on the movie are thus. It was so unpredictable, you know, there wasn't any huge surprises in the movie. I actually expected there to be more deaths. I really did. So the fact that there was only two was uh, quite a shock. but. You know, the movie is definitely full of action film cliches, and if you know what you're going into with a Marvel movie, you know what it's going to be like. 
But one thing I thought was really cool is that we've had 21 films to get to know these characters, and so they kind of feel like family to us, and we're really invested in what happens to them. And I think that's why the movie is so powerful on a lot of levels, and really on the surface, it's not much more than your average superhero movie. But the fact that, again, we've been with these characters for 10 years now across almost two dozen movies really, I think, reverberates and makes this movie... Uh, have a relationship with its fans it'd be very hard to top for other franchises thus concludes my thoughts and feelings on Endgame I hope you enjoyed the movie as much as I did on our next episode we are finally going to get to Star Trek I know I've been trying to do it forever it is going to happen so bring it back right here and we're off to the final frontier <laughs>